This sorcerer build for Baldur's Gate 3 was sent in by a viewer and I don't want to put any background that the viewer may or may not have had in their mind so I'm just going to skip straight to character. And I want to give credit to Neprostoman, is the viewer who gave this idea for a build. And so I have named the character Neprostavman, I hope you can understand why. For the backgrounds they suggested for the skills we can kind of go with whatever we want but they said they want to go for criminal because it gives stealth proficiency which can help in some situations in combat so you can get advantage on your attacks and I don't disagree with that at all so I'm going to stick with what they suggested which also gives us proficiency in deception. For the race we're picking a drow half elf. We want a race with charisma plus two and they suggested a drow half elf because we get some extra spells such as dancing lights and fairy fire at level three when we get there. Then for the two stats that we choose the bonus for, Dexterity and Constitution, sounding very solid so far. Also, as being a Drow Half-Elf, we get Fate Ancestry, Dark Vision up to 40 feet, and a base racial speed of 30 feet, which is nice and average. The appearance, I've, I just made this up myself, kind of at random. So we're going to be a Sorcerer here. We're going to pick the Draconic Bloodline, and this is always going to be a solid option, because our base armor class is 13. And so we don't need to worry about remembering mage armor as a spell and then trying to also s spend a spell slot for that. So the idea behind this sorcerer build is to kind of turn your cantrips into powerful spells indeed. It was suggested to pick Firebolt, Rare Frost, and Shock and Grasp and Aquatic Touch. Firebolt, just I think because it's generally a good cantrip in terms of damage, plus there are some items that can benefit Firebolt. Ray of Frost and Shock and Grasp can be, or the damage can be increased by making enemies wet, and we'll get to that later. And then Chill Touch, they described it as a utility kind of cantrip, oh, it does damage, but also has utility against undead and against any enemy that might be healing. And the AI does throw potions at each other, they do try and heal themselves sometimes, so it is a good choice I feel. For the spells, they suggested uh, definitely Chromatic Orb because it has, again we're going for kind of versatility utility here, because Chromatic Orb has all of these effects that can create surfaces, it gives you a choice of what you want to do, and then a powerful spell such as Sleep or Thunder Wave, I've gone with Sleep, nothing wrong with Thunder Wave whatsoever, and we'll get to that later. And as for the actual Ancestry, we're going for Acid because this gives us Tasha's Hideous Laughter, and this is something that can be twinned quite well later, it's kind of a nice control spell. As for the skills, it was suggested do what I want, so I've kind of leaned into the whole, well we've got someone with a high charisma, why not go for the charisma skills, make them really good at that as well. Then for the ability scores, as we can see here, charisma 17, this will go up to 18 later, dexterity and constitution, or sorry, dexterity at 14 and constitution at 16, which is really good because it gives us an extra hit point. And also, I forgot to say earlier, for the Draconic Ancestry, we also get one extra hit point per level, so this really quite, this adds up quite well. Then Wisdom at 10, Intelligence, intelligence at 9 and Strength at 9. I personally, if I'm going to go with Intelligence of 9, I might as well go for 8 and put Strength up to 10. Although saying that, there's a reason, I, th I think there's a good reason why Intelligence is 9. Um, we don't really want to have Wisdom too low because Wisdom helps us resist some effects, spell effects, which if we fail them can be quite bad, such as Hold Person or some sort of charm. So you don't really want to dump Wisdom as a stat. Anyway, I'll show you levels 2 to 4 next. At level 2, we're already up to 18 hit points because of our subclass and also our high constitution, which is great. As a sorcerer, we get sorcery points, which can be used to create spell slots from sorcery points or create sorcery points from spell slots. We get two meta magics, one of which I've been told is must get twinned spell. And I can see why, because all of our cantrips, or at least attacking cantrips, can be twinned, which is great. Pick careful spell if you've chosen thunder wave. I haven't chosen thunder wave. So I'm just going to leave that alone. And then you've still got the choice between distant or extended. They say go for dist uh, they say go for extended if you've picked sleep. We could also pick up blade ward later if we pick extended. They prefer distant spell because we can it buffs rain dancer a lot and you can and create water will be quite a central part to the build. I'm going to go with distant their preferred option. I must say though that I do like extended spell. It really does work well with sleep. Because currently sleep, you have you have, the enemy is only down for two turns, whereas with extended spell that would go up to four. And the same thing for blade ward. Extended spell can really help some of these spells, so it's not a bad choice at all to pick extended. But we're going with distant. And then for the spell, they said pick witch bolt. And there's three reasons for this. One, we've got a very limited amount of spell slots, and I, maybe they meant spells known as well. And we should choose the most efficient spells possible. And the reason they say it's efficient is that we can twin it. 
from especially if it's from stealth or with bless upon us meaning there's a good chance to hit uh, so it's a, uh, they say almost a guaranteed chance to hit uh, with at least one enemy we can double the damage from wet enemies which goes with the create water and then if you have hit two enemies with the twinned version you can use twin spell on they call it the reactivation cantrip it's not uh, it's, well, i guess it isn't really cantrip is it it's, but yeah i know what they mean that we can twin that i've not tried that yet uh, i'll try it later at level three we get a few more hit points one more sorcery point and we get to pick one more meta magic feature and quicken spell is the it's a must there's no other choice given here and one of the reasons for this although it costs three sorcery points per spell i'll show you later but we're going to be creating lots of sorcery points so it doesn't matter that it costs three as for the spell they said pick thunder wave or sleep pretty much the one we hadn't picked before so we're going to go for thunder wave because i've already got sleep so we don't want a replacement spell and you might think "Ooh, why have they picked a level one spell even though level two spells are available to us and it's because we're going to be converting level two spell slots into sorcery points so we're never going to have or really i guess have level two spell slots available to cast but we will at level four pick a level two spell though and as a drow half elf we get fairy fire it's always nice to have an extra spell to cast which will link we could use with distant spell and the casting modifier for fairy fire as a drow or drow half elf is charisma which is great because we're going to have a high charisma and at level four we get more hit points one more sorcery point cantrip they said go for poison spray for the spells they said pick one level two spell of preference they suggest taking a strong defensive option such as mirror image invisibility or misty step we, as a quick preview we're going to get the misty step amulet so uh, i'd prefer to have a spell that has something different it's nice to have options more utility and I'm, I'm kind of thinking about that i'm going with invisibility because this can be used i guess to get out of trouble if you really need it but also can be used out of combat to bypass places get to places make sneaking around easier and we can use it on other people and we can we can twin invisibility if we really want to as well as for the feet or ability score improvement they said go for magic initiate bard our our, our spell casting modifier for the bard and the bard spells is charisma which is nice that links up with the sorcerer for the cantrips the decision was vicious mockery and either blade ward or friends blade ward if we've picked extended spell i didn't pick that so i've gone with the friends and we can twin vicious mockery and then the spell we can cast this is just once per day well once per long rest dissonant whispers because it is a solid extra spell for twinned sorcery and i can't disagree there other options we could have gone with if we're going for twin spell and it wouldn't be for damage but cure wounds or healing word is a once per day having one of these especially cure wound, especially healing word which we could even oh in fact we could use cure wounds either with twinned or with extended kind of using extended gives it the same functionality as healing word but heals more though at the cost of a sorcery point um, but anyway yeah we're going for dissonant whispers it helps with both battlefield control and with damage before i go through all of the items i do just want to show you my charisma score because i have used volo's ursat's eye which is why our charisma is at 18 rather than having to use an ability score improvement this is also why as i said during character creation i can see why intelligence is nine so when we take one away from it it goes down to eight so we don't get minus two from ability checks at the end of the day i don't think it's a big deal for one of your characters to have an intelligence of seven the strength of 10 is much better than eight there are some gaps that are too far or sometimes places above that are too high for someone with a strength of eight to reach and i prefer strength to intelligence intelligence skill checks can be done by someone else hopefully not the end of the world but you know either way it's fine anyway so for the items there wasn't any actually uh, any uh, headgear that was suggested no helmet so i've gone and picked up the circlet of fire so when you deal fire damage with a non-cantrip cantrip spell so a chromatic orb you gain a bonus action which then can then be used with quickened spell as in you get an extra bonus action so you can get out another spell with your quickened meta magic other options could be Lifebringer because you might be having uh, lightning charges from the water sparkers, which, well, yeah, we have the water sparkers. Or maybe the circlet of blasting just to have an extra spell at your, your at your disposal. We can't use twinned with it, but distant spell would work and so would quicken spell. Anyway, then to the robe. Ideally, you would pick the poisoner's robe because we have poison spray and the option for a poison chromatic orb. However, it is currently bugged and adds 1d4 poison damage to all damage done, pretty much. 
So I don't want to include that in this build during patch 8 because I don't want uh, don't want it to look overpowered. And in fact, uh, Neprosta Man also said that he doesn't really like the idea of taking it. What did he say exactly? It's currently bugged and works for every spell and cantrip and that's why they don't use it. So fair enough. In the later patches, we can add the Poisoner's Robe here. The Gloves of Flint and Steel and the Ring of Fire. Lovely little combination for any time you do fire damage, so Firebolt. And again, we're here to try and boost the cantrips is kind of the idea. So the fact that we can increase the damage of Firebolt is good because it doesn't cost a spell slot. And then to go with the Water Sparkers is the Spark Spore, so you're not electrocuted. So one of the combinations that was suggested is that we cast Rain Dancer. Cast Rain Dancer. Cast Create Water using Rain Dancer here. We've got Create Water. And then potentially Misty step into that water to then electrocute people. And then in the turn after, you could either use Rare Frost or Shock and Grasp or Lightning Bolt or Witch Bolt or Chromatic Orb that's cold or Lightning and then deal extra damage, double the damage to the target or targets. Now something that's to kind of increase the power of the cantrips, it will use sorcery points. And we only have one, one, we only have four per long rest. But what we can do is convert spell slots into sorcery points. So I'm going to use level two spell slots. And I'm going to use a couple of level one spell slots. I think this is probably the minimum number of spell slots that would be suggested to convert. So we've got 10 sorcery points to play around with. We could have up to, I guess, a very maximum 16, no, sorry, 14, if we use up the rest of the spell slots. I quite like having a few spell slots left over. So we can make use of these leveled spells when, or if we need to, and to give us more versatility, because if we took away these leveled spells, I wouldn't be able to cast most of these, although Tasha's Hideous Laughter and Fairy Fire come from subclass and race, and Create Water comes from an item, as does Misty Step, but I wouldn't be able to cast Sleep, Witch Bolt, Thunder Wave, Chromatic Orb, or Dissonant, or Dissonant Whispers is once per long rest because it's from the feet. But yeah, I, I like to have spell slots available, so I have the choice of casting these spells if and when needed, but we've got lots of choices for cantrips up here. It's one of the great benefits of sorcerers. So let's try and put this into practice. So we can use Create Water. The idea is to get someone covered in water. In fact, what we could do, because this will be an, effectively an AoE, oh, we're gonna have an auto save. You can see there are two well, future enemies inside here. I'm gonna ungroup everyone. Maybe turn-based mode will be good. So we're going to use Create Water to cover two of them with water. And we can, if we wanted to, use Distance Spell with Create Water if we need to... Oh, did that work? Sorry, I just want to check that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so... Without Distance Spell, Create Water can only come out to here. With Distance Spell, all the way down here. Plus the extra distance from the circle itself. So we can put put the radius of the circle, uh, the center of the circle, the edge of this white line here, but the radius of the top of the effect extends past that circle. Anyway, so I'm going to create water here. That doesn't make them hostile. It gives them wet for three turns. And then, well, I'm quite close, so I don't actually need to misty step into there. I just jump. It should be on uh, if I come out of this. Oh, why are the water spark is not working? Ah, join combat, that's why, right. Makes sense. I've got to start combat. Sorry, apologies. That's me misusing and misreading the item. Ah, I used up distance spell for crit water there. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, so what I can do then is twin. Since no one can see me, let's hide. I can twin Witch Bolt. 88% chance. Not bad. I'm probably going to hit at least one of them. Here's hoping. And both of them. Ooh, look at that. That was lucky. Alright, they're all surprised, which is good. So, Anders, there's a critical hit against him. So roll 10 on 2d12. Slightly disappointing, but the vulnerable because of the wet condition. So we've got 20 damage to Anders and 16 to Trin. And then we've got this Activate Witch Bolt, which by itself could do one or the other. But if we twin Activate Witch Bolt, they're just about within the right range. And kill them both. Sweet. So I'm still with the Prost Haveman. We've got a bonus action if we wanted to. I don't want to because I, three sorcery points is quite a lot. 
could use Quicken Spell. I'd probably use a Cantrip at this point. Maybe Ray of Frost. But the idea is to try and get the enemy wet first. So we could try and lead them into the surface. And this is going to be kind of one of the... Not exactly downside, but you will have to take long rests quite often. Depending on how quickly you burn through the sorcery points. Also, I don't want to use my sorcery points here. Just in general, because I've got Shadowheart, the Imp, and Lazel, who will act before Rurik on his turn. The Sorcerer didn't get to do anything to Rurik, because <laughs> Lazel did a lovely critical hit. Did 29 damage, and I believe, yeah, he had 28 hit points. Killed him in one hit. One hit kill. Thank you, Lazel. And she still even has Action Surge and a bonus action left. Good stuff. And so at this point, I just want to point out something that you would have seen happen earlier, but I didn't talk about it. Is... The Postaf Man gains some lightning charges, so that gives him a plus one to attack rolls and an additional one lightning damage. It's not massive, but it all helps. As well as being blessed by Shadowheart, so I assume if I try to hit this... It's a mage, actually. Kind of lucky that armor class is going to be low anyway. 95% chance. The only way I'm going to miss is, is a critical miss if a one is rolled. Now let's think about the metamagic options and the cantrips here. So I could use try and use Twin Spell, be a bit of a waste because, well, actually I could try and hit her twice with uh, Rare Frost here, or, or Fireball. Let's actually try that, see what happens. There we are, right. She's not quite dead. <laughs> uh, this is cheesy. I, I assume, I could be wrong, that they'll take this out of the game. Being able to twin cast something onto the same person twice. That's not really how it's supposed to work. But we rolled eight damage, well, seven damage, plus one from the ring, five plus one from the ring, then some lightning damage, and then, <laughs> this is from the Gloves of Flint and Steel, I believe. And this is kind of maybe broken. I can't quite tell exactly what's happening here. It says, Cyrell, Kyrell, however we say her name, failed a saving throw against a blast from the Prostav Man. And it says lightning charge damage. So we hit for one damage, or she was hit for one damage. And then we've got this burning, f this, this four, this 1d4 comes from the Gloves of Flint and Steel. However, I kind of imagine it should have been directly after the fire damage rather than the lightning damage it's hard to say and i just want to point out we do get plus one damage from burning fury from the ring the ring of fire added on, to on top of the gloves of flint and steel and it might mean that on her turn that she dies there's a, what a 75 percent chance she dies because burning is 1d4 damage and down she goes and i was wondering about this and I'm glad i caught this on camera she took two fire damage Oh no, I was wrong, wasn't I? She was always going to die because of the ring. I didn't know, yeah, if the ring would actually apply to the burning damage from the gloves, but it does. And we got an additional one lightning damage. It says damage rolled, one, 1d4, but I think that's just one lightning damage from having lightning charges against the the gloves, the gloves of flint and steel. So overall, uh, the sorcerer killed three of them at the cost of four used, well... I don't know whether we should, we probably should include the cost of the spell slots to create the sorcery points, but we used four sorcery points, one spell slot, killed three there. They weren't, they're not the most difficult enemies to kill, but neither are they, are they the easiest. They're probably level four, the level that the party is at. So I'm going to go find and fight the, maybe the gnolls next since they're nearby. So I got into a little bit of trouble here. I did take a short rest after the previous fight so I could get the use of create water back. So the problem here, uh, well, might be a problem, is that these gnolls are on different levels and a tiny bit spread out. I'm going to throw caution to the wind to try and show what we can do. So I'm going to use Create Water. I'm going to get as many of them wet as possible, which I think is going to be, yeah, probably just four of them. And then, so we cast Create Water and as like an opening salvo, Misty Step into the water. And I don't know if the lightning charges are going to spread through the water from these different heights. Just in the event that it doesn't, I'm going to go on to the level with the Flind because we want to get as much damage done to that thing as possible. Invinium. So it went down here. So the hyena up here got wet, but there's no water surface down there. Oh well. And let's have a look at what damage we did. We did two, six, and six. Pretty good. So we did essentially uh, 2d4 damage to each of them, 2d4 lightning damage. Now we're out of action and bonus action. So next turn we can start twinning things or casting things twice to try and cut some of these down to size. And maybe you sleep. Sleep would be quite good to put some of these as well to sleep. But we'll see what happens. So there's some good news and bad news for Naprostav man. 
The good news is the Flind took 8 lightning damage and extra 2d4 damage. So it's kind of the point here with the Create Water and Misty Step is that they will take a, at a minimum 4d4 damage, assuming they survive, of 4d4 lightning damage because they take 2d4 lightning damage the turn that you land. And then the beginning of the next turn, they take another 2d4 lightning damage. And he's not electrocuted, so that won't happen again. But should we apply any lightning damage, there'll be an extra set of it. As to good news, bad news, this was the <laughs> problem with throwing the Prostab Man right into the middle of a bunch of gnolls, is the Flind used the Flail of Paralysis, which actually worked. Failed a... Oh, look at that. The DC is 16. It's, for a level 4 character, a save DC of 16 is relatively high. We rolled a 14 in total, even with a plus 3 to Constitution. So when it comes to... And Prostav Man's next turn, he can't do any he can't do anything because he's paralyzed, which means just in case you didn't know, can't move, take actions, bonus actions, or reactions, essentially can do nothing. Also, since they are incapacitated, if he had been concentrating, he would have lost concentration. Thankfully, that wasn't the case. So it's going to be in a pros Oh <laughs> brilliant. Um so I was just gonna say it's gonna be in a Prostav's man turn next. And he, the Null Hunter took 6 lightning damage at the start of its turn. It walked out of the water and walked back in and got re-electrocuted and took another 2d4 lightning damage and died. Uh, it seems like... Ah, oh, the paralysis was only for one turn, which actually isn't that bad at all. Because when something lasts for one turn, at the beginning of your turn, the effect runs out. I didn't realise that, which is good. I hadn't really thought through what I was going to be doing here. So we've got the Flind, not a Warlord, here, which is going to be a bit problematic. But we can use Shocking Grasp. It's not a great chance to hit, but that's because its armor class is relatively high. We could use it on the Null Hunter. No real point. It can't take opportunity attacks anyway. What you want to do is aim for people who are wet so we can double the damage. I don't want to walk away because there could be an opportunity attack. So I could try and twin. No. Oh, so close. I can't quite twin. Yeah, I can't quite twin Shock and Grasp between the Flint and the Norfang Yinogu. I'm going to try and go for the Norfang because it will die if I hit it. I don't need Twin Spell in that case. If I hit it. So I'm a bit annoyed by that. So I'm going to use Cooking Spell. Go -go. There we are. And we got some lightning charges because we started the turn basically being electrocuted. I have now used up three more spell slots. I killed someone. That was a guaranteed kill if I hit them. And I really hate these Nolfang Yinogus because they can cast Soul Numb, which takes away your bonus actions and reactions, and it's all very, very annoying. Now, handily, I have Shadow Heart in the party. And as a cleric, she gets access to the spell Create or Destroy Water, and I'm actually going to get her to help out. And I'm going to be very careful because I don't want Lazel to be caught up in this. I only want to hurt the enemy. I do have a Conjured Imp here, but it can't get affected by surfaces since it is flying. So if I just do... Is it going to get... Is she going to get... No, no opportunity attacks. It's a ranged attacker. Maybe here. Shall be done. Hope this works out. So we get more lightning. Oh, it's not quite stand... Ah, oh, I must have misplaced the Create Water. Never mind. The idea was good. The... <laughs> uh, I just didn't actually execute it very well. Oh, well. Maybe I should give... A helping hand. Take there we are. I'm hoping for a bit of luck here. I got Will, who has the Staff of Arcane Blessing, to cast Mistress Grace? Mistress Grace? Mistress Blessing, sorry. I'm going to take an opportunity attack from the Warlord. I feel like 29 hit points is enough. Oh, he didn't. Uh, not quite sure why. Good. So I've got five lightning charges. I've got height, hopefully. Go a bit further up. I've got Mistress Blessing, so on ranged attack rolls, spell attack rolls, let's twin... 80% chance now, up from about f roughly 50 or 60% earlier. I can't hide, sadly, uh, even though I've got a bit of bonus to stealth, I'm in light, a lit area, completely clear area, I'll be seen if I try to hide, so I could twin either witch bolt i'm gonna or chromatic orb i'm gonna go with chromatic orb i haven't used it yet today all right and this is 95 percent chance sadly the null flesh nora down here isn't wet now there we are that's what we wanted so the flind was hit for 16 two from the lightning damage lightning charge which is just one although it says one plus eight there the rolls here are a bit messed up uh, this damage roll is from the one before 
but the actual damage is just one because of the lightning charges. And because I had five lightning charges, we rolled an extra 1d8 damage. And again, this this eight lightning is, is obviously a mistake. It's from the previous, the original damage. Really, we rolled a three. And because they're vulnerable, that's an extra three. So in total, that was what, uh, 24 damage, which is almost, uh, not quite half, but getting there. And the other one was hit for six, not as quite as much. But do want to point out that the lightning charge extra like bonus damage only applies to the first hit. And I think it's probably because I clicked on the flint first. Maybe it's because it was closer. I haven't tested that. Um, but yeah, that was a really quite good use of twin spell. And that only cost one sorcery point plus the level one spell slot. But now, uh, now that I am below two, uh, below, now that I am below three sorcery points, I cannot quicken anything anymore. I could create it for one to two. I can do it in combat. Two more sorcery points. Giving up my level two spell slot, but giving me four sorcery points to boost my cantrip damage. I do still have a couple of spells left from items or from the feet, such as Dissonant Whispers here. So I think it was clear I needed a long rest after the previous battle. So I'm going to create my spell slots again after the long rest. Again, I'm going to go for 10 sorcery points. I think it's a nice medium kind of compromise where you've still got some spell slots, but you've got a fair number of sorcery points to play around with. I've just realized Spell Thief could work quite well if you can get a critical hit with Spell Thief to get a spell slot back. So then you can get either an extra spell slot or an extra sorcery point. So here we are. Let's uh, slow this down. So we're going to get everyone to hide. Quiet, that's the way. And then I'm going to twin a fire. I'm going to use fire because I have the gloves and the ring. And I'm going to start by trying to kill these two. So this guy... Here we are, right. Hopefully we can see the damage here. Flaming Fist, just want to check. Uh, Aeolus, Ito... Ooh, Pavel took, or Pavel, Pavel, took a lot of damage. So some from Burning Fury. Oh, the doors have gone down now. Some from Burning Fury, or a few times from Burning Fury. Some from the actual Chromatic Orb. So we started off quite well there. Dealt up damage to several of them. So we use up one spell slot already. It's a bit sad. So I'll try not to use up all the spell slots. If I used Create Water on these guys who are burning, it would get rid of their burning. So if we're going to use this sorcery, we do just have to keep an eye on which status effects the enemies have. Make sure not to mix basically the water and the fire. So we had this previous idea of using Create Water and the Water Sparkers. I might wait for that because I want the fire here, the fire damage, the burning to do as much damage as possible. Uh, everyone else is a bit spread out, so maybe I could use a twin twin spell. I don't have any bonuses to hit. Maybe I can get to the heart to use Bless to help things along. There we are. Oh, Will is... Actually, let's get Will to hit them. That helps speed things along a little bit. Right. I may as well... Ooh, I was going to say, I may as well try and get to this water. It's not going to happen without using a bonus action. Do you know what? I might do that anyway. Because next turn, it means we should start with some lightning charges, which is what we want. And what we're going to do here, I know the flaming fist here sometimes like to heal each other. So I'm going to twin the chill touch. I almost call it necrotic touch. We don't quite get to choose exactly who gets twins, but I'm going to go for flaming fist Pavel just in case I kill him. And I also don't want him healing. And it will also go on to flaming fist Ito. If I hit, I do hit, which is lucky. So it should mean Flaming Fist Pavel is dead on his turn, assuming they don't put the fire out. Uh, and Flaming Fist Ito is going to get hurt, but also not healed. No surprise for taking the damage. Let's just get everybody together. <laughs> Let's group everyone together, please. Oh, or just kill someone. Okay. It's L. You don't have a point to prove. Uh, I was, I was, what I was going to do is try and push Flaming Fist Tristan into here. So next turn, I can do the whole create water thing and get them all electrocuted but I don't need it I do not need it oh there goes one. Oh yeah they are quite clever these flaming fists can actually be a little bit difficult so I'm going to say that the create water here let's make sure we turn that off is worth it right now hopefully that gets all of them laser is already electrocuted anyway what does it matter I don't even need to misty step here anymore because I got them all electrocuted. Fleming Fist Ito, because he was burning, doesn't have the wet condition, but he did get electrocuted. Now Gauntlet Dane is a cleric. She just used probably one of the best abilities I love in the game. Used the Light Cleric Channel Divinity option. And so I'm a bit annoyed by her. 
so let's quicken well oh, i think she's wearing meta metallic armor i think a lot of them are yeah we're gonna get advantage i think I'm not certain but i think oh good amount of damage there yeah i've got advantage because shock and grasp gives advantage against enemies wearing metallic armor and i rolled a five which got doubled which is nice and the one here got doubled i'm on three lightning charges she can't take any reactions i should make sure i'm in the lightning of the uh electrocuted water so i get more lightning charges next turn oh there goes one of the flaming fist this is turning out really quite nicely right now they're electrocuted she's gonna die because she's wet and electrocuted oh and even here flaming fist aeolus took maximum of four of 1d4 lightning damage which got doubled up to eight and the lightning charges added, got added to that there's 10 lightning damage kind of damage over time sort of ability and so down goes flaming fist quite a funny animation there dane you could say she's now disdain <laughs> right and then we've got gauntlet to yiva to worry about now i'm burning through spell slots quite quickly here so i'm just going to use oh no not, not that use a simple shocking grasp because i got oh, I just hid i didn't know to, I need to hide because she's got metallic armor never mind do that she's taking double damage she's taking damage from the lightning charges and then i can run away because shock and grasp has been used so we're going to oh we've got so much choice here i can use dissonant whispers not guaranteed to kill her it'll do some damage regardless i could use rare frost i could use a twinned i'm feeling really mean a twinned chromatic orb with cold though that might affect lazelle though she seems to be standing in blood that's okay <laughs> don't say that too often uh it could put her to sleep and then we can just completely... Yeah, let's do that. All right. Imperial this is well over the top. We don't need to do this. But let's just do it for the sake of it. Let's quicken... I've only got a level 2 spell slot left. <laughs> there we are. 37 thunder damage. The reason that worked is because if an enemy is asleep, any attack against them, whether ranged or melee, will be an automatic critical hit. Which is why it says attack roll 17, but then critical. So we've got 8d8 damage. I did a, a decent amount of damage, about average. And then we got some extra lightning charge damage on top of that. So let me know what you think of this character. I did put on the Lifebringer. I don't know whether I said that earlier. So maybe got some temporary hit points during the battle, which is quite nice. A small bonus, but only while you've got lightning charges. A big thank you again to the Prostav Man for sending this in, making it interesting. We get to buff up. The cantrips. I didn't get to use every single spell here. I didn't get to use Dancing Lights or Fairy Fire. And I didn't actually use Vicious Mockery, or Dissonant Whispers, or Tasha's Hideous Laughter. And it's not that they're bad spells. It's just I didn't get a chance to show them all Poison Spray. Show them in the video. It's good to have versatility. We don't need to rely on the same spells all the time. If you made it this far, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.